Next question is from Soverall Training. Did you have any strategies in your personal training business to create efficiency or automation when working with and managing a lot of clients at once? Yeah, this is a good question and because in some ways, automation uh, improves your service and your value. And in other ways, I've seen trainers automate and it reduce mm -hmm. their, their, the value that they provide clients. So I think it's smart. If you want to be a really effective trainer, what I mean by effective is you, you really change people's lives. You really get them to you know, create a, a lifelong good relationship with exercise and nutrition. If that's what you want to do, you should automate the business side of what you're doing, which is managing their payments, managing you know when they're paying, their scheduling, that kind of stuff. But never, never automate their training or their nutrition because uh, then you lose the individualization and you lose the on-the-fly ability to manage and change as people's feelings and attitudes and lifestyle type of change. Mm -hmm. I've seen trainers automate everything, yeah. and then it becomes nothing more than just a Well, I've seen a program. couple different strategies. Like, you know, in order to be more efficient, a lot of times they'll end up doing um, small groups. They'll, they'll stack some of their clients together and try and... But you have to realize, like, you know, just inevitably your, your service is going to go down just a bit because you're not hyper-focused on the individual. Like, like, now you have a couple people to account for, you know, and it might work uh, for a while, but it just depends on on your business model. Maybe maybe that's part of your business model. Maybe, you know, even group training is something you're trying to lead into. I went the other direction. I went, I went in reducing and providing more value. And so, uh, you know, I started looking at the price point that I was putting out, you know, for each client. It, and that became sort of a barrier. So that way I could slow down a bit, provide better service. And then I got a better result for, out of my client because, you know, there's more buy-in and plus my business flourished. So I, I like the way that you, and I'd love you to explain how you did it. I, I love the way you charged your client because the traditional model is clients buy packages of sessions. So like, yeah. you know, 10 sessions for, you know, a thousand dollars or 20 sessions for whatever. But you did it so that they paid you monthly, right? Yeah. They paid, they paid monthly a flat fee. Uh, and basically, you know, I gave them two options. So that way they're either part-time or they're full-time. And so this requires them to commit uh, to any of scheduled, you know, days that, that were marked in the calendar that they they show up or they don't show up. I'm going to be there. And if I'm not there, I'm paying them back or I'm like, you know, prorating it or whatever that is. But uh, it, it takes the accountability. It puts it back on the client. And that way too, I can be, I can have consistent revenue each month that, you know, I can account for. So, so part-time would be like, I pay this much, but and I can come see you two days a week. Full-time, right. I pay it's this like much. It's like two to three times per week versus full-time was, you know, I was going up with uh, four so to I five think, times I think that's really, really brilliant. So um, I love this question. Um, and there's been like several things in my career that I think I, I got better at as far as my organization and how do I manage so many, you know, scaling up on how many clients from 10 to 20 to 30 plus. Um, the best thing that I ever did, and it took me a long, this wasn't even that long ago. It was just shortly before mind pump started. Did I really get this? And the reason why I was able to do this is because we are now, and this is why I love all the tools and the apps and things like that. Now to Sal's point, I agree fully automating some things like that, that just, they need a personal touch are, are so, are so important. And you may, you know, you may decrease the value in, in your service if you try and automate everything. But what I used to do as a trainer is I used to do all the legwork, the, the tracking, the writing down, the, you know, I was the one doing all that. And I flipped that on its head towards the end of my career where I began holding them responsible to deliver all that information to me. That was a huge game changer for me as far as time suck. It also weeded out the not serious clients. Mm -hmm. If you were not willing to weigh yourself in the morning at night, you were not willing to add, put your food in your in your food app every single night. If you were not willing to track your steps every single day for me, and you log all of that information and then deliver it to me, then you weren't. I wasn't going to train you. If you did all those things, it made my job extremely easy. Then I all I had to do was sit down, assess in a week see where, where her weight has gone up or down and what she exactly ate, look at her food logs. And then we could, in one session, I could critique that entire week. I could educate and teach. I can drive the programming from there. Do I need to increase intensity? Do I need to lower it and modify it? Do I need to increase steps from there? Do I need to bump up her calories? And she had to do all the tracking for me. I didn't do any of it and you bring it to me. And then that allowed me to take on way more people 
than the old version where I'm writing everything down, I'm measuring everything, I'm weighing and doing all these things. I'm the one who's like writing the diets out and the plans out like, nah, I got away from all that. When we talked on the podcast a long time ago, I talked about how I used to make clients track their food for a week or two before I would even start their their session. Mm-hmm. And that was first to get, are you even serious enough to track your food for a week if you're even considering working with me? And a lot of people, honestly, that weeds out like 50%. Yeah. 50% of the people won't even, and I always know they're not that serious. It's like, I'm not even charging you yet, and I can't even get you to write out your food for a week, and you're telling me you really want to learn and you really want to figure this out? Like, no, that client's going to cause, is going to be so much work for me to try and help them if they can't even help themselves for the first week. So that right there really, really helped now me. Now, this, this speaks to the experienced trainer who has a lot of value and has the ability to still have a business while weeding people out, right? Right. Now the new trainer might not have that luxury, that's, right? I mean, that's that's the thing. That's why a question like this. I like a question like this, but you have to understand. There's, there's that's why I met. There's yeah, when le- you first started. Yeah, you, you I, took everybody. I took, I took everybody. Yeah. I took every. It didn't matter the time. Then you become more efficient. Didn't matter how inconsistent you were. I need. I needed the experience. I needed mm-hmm. to build my book. And that, and and that's a good thing too, right? Like if you're just getting started as a trainer, you don't want to come off as pompous and like, oh, I only take the yeah. serious people. Yeah, it's you like, don't know what you're doing anyway. Yeah, you don't know what the fuck you're doing anyways. <laughs> you need practice. You need practice. You need headache. You need all yeah. that bullshit. You know, like Gary Vee says, eat shit for nine years. Yep. Go through all that process for a while. Then when you get that down, then you can start to do things like this where you, like Justin, move to a super high class, people that are spending top that dollar. That did not happen for a while. Yeah, you yeah. couldn't do yeah. that in year one. <laughs> I took everybody for years. Yeah, year and, one, you yeah. can't say, oh, you can only work with me if you have five or seven no. grand budget a month. Like, yeah, get out of here. No, 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 Not a lot of trainers can do that. You got to wait till you figure it out. You get the timing. You, you know all the nuances involved. Uh, and then you you start looking back at what what's going to benefit my business the most. How can I structure that? How can I get buy in from you know potential new new prospects? And 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 then you go from there. Well, I I do believe though, even if you're a new trainer, you can move in the direction that I'm talking about. You just might be a little more flexible on still taking somebody, right? Sure. So maybe where I'm more of a hard ass from, so I'm sorry, I'm not even going to take you. Maybe you still take them and try and move and move them along and you learn from them and they learn from you. Yeah. But you definitely can, st- I mean, we have all these tools now. It's not that expensive to get something that tracks your steps. Mm-hmm. There is My Fitness Pal, Fat Secret apps that are super easy to use. Most everybody has access to like a scale. I mean, we all can text back and forth so easily. So we can now, and this wasn't like this, 20 years ago, 20 years ago, we didn't have all this. We, we had binders and files and we had to write everything down. Like a lot of this stuff can be tracked right in your phone and you should, you put a lot of the responsibility because here's the deal. Well, they learn from it. Well, they, and they also have to do this the rest of their life. Yeah. If they got to do this the rest of their life at one point or another, they got to learn to start doing this. Yeah. Shit. And what you mean by the rest of your life, by the way, for listeners who are like, oh my God, I have to add my food up every single No, 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 no. You do for, you do at first to learn what's in food. After a little while though, you can Tell what's in the chicken breast, and right. you know where you're getting your carbs, and you can. It just yeah, to you bring just have to have a baseline first. Yeah, it's just you're going to school for a little while. That's right? right. Yeah, my strategy was a little bit different towards the end. I similar though, right? Uh, I still took almost anybody who who wanted to hire me, but if they weren't consistent, didn't show up, I just took them off the schedule, and I'd tell them that. I'd say, look, here's the deal: you missed two workouts. Um, it seems like it's real tough for you to to show up right now, so I'm going to take you off the schedule. But you, because I have other people that can put I can put in that time. You let me know when you're ready to come back, and that usually would weed people out, or they would start to show up and be a little more consistent. And the reason why that was my strategy was I tried to meet people where they were because I found that I actually found success when I would get the occasional client who didn't want to do anything else but show up once a week. I don't want to do anything else, but I'll show up once a week. And over time, I had a few clients that I did this with. Over time, they came two days a week, three days a week, did it on their own. And then they started to really make those changes. But yeah, if you're showing those signs of whatever, um, obviously, I'm not going to waste my time. And so I just say, well, okay, you know, I used to do that. Text them. Listen, you know, you missed another workout or 20 minutes late. I'm going to take you off the schedule. Uh, You know, let me know. I'm going to put someone else there. You let me know when you're ready to come back. And usually they would come back. Sometimes I'd never hear from them again, in which case, you know, you're weeding them out. 